Good night, Sister Deborah Dio. God bless you. Pray that you've had a good day. Amen. We're starting to get some folks on Facebook. I'll take a peek at who it is momentarily. Mm. Hey, Brother Rudolph Dio, God bless you. I see you there. I believe that will be you. Amen. Good to see you, sir. Always, always. All right, and up uh, on Facebook, we have Mother Molly and Sumner. You're up at bed first. God bless you. And then we have, oops, fix both those cameras. There you go. Uh, overseer, good night to you. Sister Nikki Cook, God bless you. Deaconess in training in Dallas. And I think I finished the preaching part last night because today is Tuesday, right? So it's Sunday, Monday, yeah. Okay, so we're going to a book at Psalm. We're going to a Psalm. All right, good stuff. Um, Deaconess and Training, Karen, God bless you. Good evening to you. Superintendent, hello to you. Amen. Thank you, Deaconess and Training, Dallas. I appreciate it. Yeah, keep me on my toes. I, 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 just now, I didn't know. I was like, what day is it? I was like, okay, it's not Wednesday because superintendent's not doing the teaching. <laughs> Mother Maxine De Silva, God bless you. I'll tell you what, we're just busy little campers, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to fix that properly. Thank you very much. Night Owl, I have to reach out to you. <laughs> Director Ryan, God bless you. Deaconess Muriel, I see you there. Mother Michelle Casey, hello. Now, what about Sister Karis? I ain't seen her. She's just backsliding on me. I ain't seen her for a bit. Renee, how you doing? Yes. <laughs> yes, Superintendent. Tomorrow. That means tomorrow's vanity, right? Okay. <laughs> I've already lost. Allison, I'm already lost track of the day. I'm telling you. <laughs> Woo. All right, all right, let me find something here. Amen. Wait for another minute before we begin uh, the selection for tonight. And then, of course, um, we'll get to, get to the Word of God. And uh, we're going to go to the Book of Psalms. Well, you know what? Let me check something out first. Let's do this. Okay, but I'm not good at D. All right. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think we'll do um, Psalms 55. I just took a glimpse. I was just trying to choose just now. Um, young pastor, God bless you. Oh, yes, Jesus is Lord. Amen to the glory of the kingdom. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. All right. Well, we're going to get started. Amen. And I think, oh, hi, Sister Carmen. So you today. Amen. Sister Carmen Bregman, God bless you. Amen. We'll do mother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To Allison. Right, 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 right. All right, well, the song tonight is, Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah, you're worthy. All right, Lord, we lift you up. Amen. Did I say hi to Kamaria? Did I see Kamaria? She's there. Sister Deborah. Sister Deborah Rollins, God bless you. And I don't see Allison, um, Kamaria yet. She'll write something else if it's just there. All right. 
Sister Sasha Andrews there, and let me say thank you for your words of encouragement. Um, very uplifting. And so personally, I say thank you. Absolutely thank you. Amen. Hey, God bless you, Sister Maxine Smith. All right, folks, so we're going to hear this song, and, and then we're going to get to the Word of God, Psalms 55. All right? Deaconess Jennifer, all right, my, my, my partner in the work right now. All right, let's enjoy this from Sunday going, hallelujah, you're worthy, Lord, we live here. Yes, we bow our head in honor and praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Is he worthy to be praised today? Is he worthy to be praised? Yeah. Hallelujah. The word is worthy. Worthy.
tell you, I tell you, what a band, what a worship leader. Lord, we lift you up. Isn't that about what it's about? <laughs> you know, that in everything that we do, we lift up the name of Jesus. All right, let me say hi to some folks. I did see Kamaria now. Hi, Kamaria. Good night. And I saw Renee. I, did I mention before? And I think so. Hi, Renee. And then Carolyn Lamb. So it's Carolyn Lamb. And Zephaniah. Hi, Zephaniah. God bless you. Amen. Sister Tony, God bless you. Ty Alex, Brother Ty Alex, God bless you. Mom Florence Sumner, how are you, Mother Sumner? Amen. Deaconess Nancy Tobit Hooks, God bless you. Amen. And I think we've got that covered. I think I already said overseer. And then Sister Jan Harvey, I'm not sure you're still on, but I hope so. And it's good to have you on board. And of course, young pastor. Young pastor, amen. Um, always good to have this fella on. And then Pastor KB01. I don't know who you are, but I certainly greet you in the name of Jesus. And I'm so grateful for another fellow general in the army. All right. And so hello to you and welcome. And Cherie, I think that's my husband's cousin. I think so. Good evening to you. And superintendent has also skipped on board. Amen. And then over here on YouTube the uh the adamses always good to see mother and father adams amazing amen i pray i've caught everyone deaconess dr woods good to see you all right folks um so let's travel now let's travel over to psalms 55 that's where i've got it parked tonight um and just for those of you that may be on for the first time especially when it gets to the psalms i just choose one and then we talk about it. We, we, I read it for the first time in front of you, with you, I should say. And then we just hear what, what is God saying through that passage. What was he saying back then? And what is it that he's saying today? So this psalm here, it's written to the chief musician. All right. Meshkiel on, uh, on Neganoth. Interesting. All right. Here it starts. Give ear to my prayer, O God. And hide not thyself from my supplication. So right off the bat, we understand that the psalmist is telling us someone has been in need. Supplication. All right? Prayer. Supplicate. Taking it a bit further. God's got some passion behind that. Something's going on. You know, um, point to note here that 
God is not discouraged when we're passionate in prayer. And certainly when we need him like we've never needed him before. Have you ever been in that situation? You know, not an ordinary crying out to the Lord, but like, God, if you don't do it, look, this is it. Uh, that's the type of supplication, right? And interesting to note that, of course, supplication, you got the root word supply. So you're saying, God, there's something I need. So I'm supplicating unto you. This is a prayer of supplication. There's something specific. So it's not a general prayer. It's supplicating. There's something I need and only God, only you can provide it. That's it right there. Amen. Oh, yeah. I need you right now. Exactly. All right. And, and, and it's give ear. Now, <laughs> give ear is more than hearing with the natural ear, like hear. Give ear. In other words, lean into this. In other words, God, come closer to my cry. And understand, God, that I need you to hear me differently than yesterday. That's, that's like give ear. Like, God, we know you can do anything, but I need you right here, right now. So give ear. I can, God, can I have your ear? In other words, can I have your attention here? But it's give. Give me your attention, God. Give me your attention. So you see the type of stance that the psalmist is taking with this, all right? Then in verse 2, following right up with it. And deaconess and train and Tyra, God bless you. Verse 2 reads, attend unto me and hear me. Hmm. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, something is going on here. Sister Itani, I did see you earlier. God bless you. Let's, let's look at, attend unto me. Watch this. Be my attendant. So you have to think of what does an attendant do? They keep an eye on the person. They have to be there for when the person is ready to call on them. They've got to be within earshot. And so this is what he's, he's speaking concerning God. Be my attendant. Remember, he just said give air. Be my, attend unto me and hear me. Right? So have, have a heart to hear me, God. Don't just hear me in, in the biological sense, but have a heart to hear me. So that when you hear me, you hear the depth of my cry. And that's what he goes into. Because he listen how he says this. I, I just love how things are written. He says, I mourn in my complaint. He could have just said, I have a complaint. Or uh, I'm mourning. But he's saying, I'm, I mourn in my complaint. This takes it to a deeper depth of pain, um, of trouble, of sorrow. Almost like he's drowning in quicksand. I'm drowning in quicksand. Drowning quicksand. <laughs> You're going to drown. I'm mourning in my complaint. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. In other words, this is a, a sound like you've not heard. That's right. Like you've not heard before. Because it's saying, I'm making a noise now. It's louder. And Jennifer, you're right. It's saying um, he's going beyond hurt and sorrow. It's a deeper level. And listen, let me just say this. I'm so glad that no matter how deep the sorrow is, the pain is, the question is, God hears you. You just hold on. I don't know when your change is going to come. But I'm telling you this. I know enough to know that God will attend your cry. You know, we know that in a, in a different Psalms, that Psalms that David said, attend unto my cry. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. This is the same type of passion here. This is not a broken toenail or fingernail. No, no. This is something deep. It's a deep pain. It's a deep, deep hurt. And the psalmist is saying, listen, I'm, com I'm mourning in the complaint. Grief beyond grief. All right. Now, you wonder how come? Well, let's go to three. Let's go to three. Anthony Brangman, I see you there, sir. God bless you. Three, because, look, listen to this now, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression 
of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. Well, that just wore me out reading it. I just got worn out, people. Ain't nothing sweet about that verse right there. We're going to read it again. <laughs> All right. Just seen it getting out of complex here. Yeah, it's a grief. It's a grief, yo. Yeah, he will. He will. He will. All right. We can cry to him. So the psalmist is saying, listen, listen why I've, I've got the complaint going. Listen to why I'm grieving. Listen to why I'm mourning. Because of the voice of the enemy. Because of the oppression of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me. And in wrath they hate me. So let's, let's deal with it. You know, some people say, um, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Names will hurt you. Words can hurt. Come on. I think we've gone beyond that now. Words will hurt, and words carry the ability to inflict a pain that lasts forever. All right? Mother Mary Mabry, God bless you. Good evening to you. And so, and good evening, and a big thank you. Uh, Mr. Anthony Richardson, thank you. And you know what I'm thanking you concerning. I really appreciate it. God bless you. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Words, words can linger in the memory bank and therefore cause a lingering pain. There are some um, physical ailments you can heal from. The pain goes. But there are some spiritual things, some emotional things, some psychological things that have been spoken and they yet remain a decade later, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. People go into the grave remembering things that were done in their childhood. Why? Because it's the power of words that come against you. And this is sort of what we're dealing with, with David is saying the voice of my enemy, the cause of me heartache. All right. Yeah. Um, Ty Alex is saying, I miss my mother. Lord, give me comfort. And he will. As a matter of fact, Ty Alex, we, we remember at that time um, that the Holy Spirit is the comforter. And so he is the uh, one of the triune Godhead who steps in during those times. And he will, he will never leave you or forsake you. All right? So just be comforted with that. God's got you. That's what God does. He supplies our every need. Okay. Amen. Yep, they do hurt. Agree. Okay, Brother Philip Lambert, good evening to you. And you're saying that this psalm is almost identical to Psalms 14, 1 through 7. Thank you. So that's a comparative analysis we may have to do. All right. So he's saying because of the oppression of the wicked. Well, you do know that's what wicked people do. <laughs> wicked people plan how to be more wicked and it's not a good feeling you know it's like i don't read comments on I, I i learned that six seven eight years when i started the coming against same-sex marriage listen best not to read what the wicked people are saying keep your heart and your mind clean because it has an impact and i need to keep my creativity the right way all right and so, therefore, we understand that there are wicked. And listen, now, this is important. This is important. We're going to discuss it right here. For they cast iniquity upon me. Let's deal with it. Good evening to you, Sierra. God bless you. They cast iniquity. Let's talk about it. Watch this. Yep, stay in focus. And Bruno, God bless you there. They cast iniquity upon me. Now, that means, I'm going to say it short, then I'm going to go into it. They bring that attitude to me. Let's, let's go into some more. Iniquity. They bring the attitude that's been passed on from their parents and their parents' parents, and they'll bring it on me. Come on now. That means there's a weight to this iniquity. All right? The iniquity means not just from the present generation, but from generations before. And so there is a weight of um oppression that wicked people desire to impute upon God's people. You know, whether you're doing good or bad, because you name the name of God, some people just can have an issue right there, flat out issue. And that's most of the times it's because of experience. Watch this. And not their own personal experience, 
But what the mama said, it was or the, the auntie or, or the grandma or the grandfather. You see, when, hear this, oh boy, I would throw this. Deaconess Nancy, you already catch this. All right. When people who have never been to church got a lot to complain about church or people that have, yeah, uh, yeah, basically they've not been to church. But they can speak so much again. How are you able to speak against something you've never attended and been involved in? Inequity. Somebody told them. It's passed on through generations. And I think, you know, and superintendent will certainly know this quote. I've used it. And um, uh, several people on here would know it. Here, here's the quote. I think the greatest crime that has been committed against children is that we never gave them an opportunity to reject Jesus. Parents rejecting Jesus, the kingdom and heaven and church for their children. Grandparents rejecting the kingdom, church, just rejecting. So the children, now what? Woo, this is some thinking. Holy Spirit's entertaining me with this. So the children grow up learning already. They've been groomed to reject the gospel. Hence, when we then expect of them, I want you to sit still. I want you to respect. I want you to honor. I want you to listen. Well, you already told them that God was evil. And therefore, you opened up a gate for them to receive evil as good. Come on, y'all. You know, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to hit it and run. But it's no different than what's happening with in American politics. You know, Trump, because he represents the righteous right, some people want to try to make Trump a Christian. How many of you know Trump ain't no, don't tell me don't judge <laughs> by your fruit. Hey, he may be fruity, but it ain't, it ain't, it ain't that fruit. Okay. <laughs> Yet, <laughs> you see, his history now is starting to catch up with him. That's the iniquity, which is who he is. And we in the church, hear me, and come back to the church, we have got to be aware that we are dealing now with a generation, more than a generation of children, and this is what makes me feel sorry about them. They never had an opportunity to say, I, to say, I, don't, want to, I don't want Jesus. They never knew him. They never knew about his house. They, they don't know the easy songs, you know, only a little David. They, they, this was common 101 Christianity. You know, building up the temple. They were like, how could, it's almost criminal. How could children grow up not knowing Jesus loves me, this I know. Because other people have stepped in and been their surrogate and rejected the kingdom, rejected King Jesus. And they don't even get it. They've rejected eternity in heaven. But we try to make everybody think at the end they made it in. But it don't work that way, and you all know it don't work that way. All right? Okay. Amen. Let's, uh, uh, Brother Philip Lambert is saying, the declaration here is echoed in Romans 3, 11. People seek some form of divine, the divine, but no one is naturally interested in the truths about sin. A common quip says that sinners do not seek God for the same reason, Criminals do not seek the police officer. <laughs> Guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> the one that will tell them the law, um, confirm that they're wrong, and probably arrest them. But I, I wish the Holy Spirit would do some arresting in Bermuda because the children uh, is what it's about. Right? Okay. And then, so, so David is saying, they cast their iniquity. So they come in. They come in with all of the generational hate towards David. Brother Darren Warwick, God bless you. So good to have you on tonight. Right? They cast their iniquity upon me. One man, David, but he was running for his life. He was running, literally, so that one day he would be king of all of Israel. Running for his life. He says, and in wrath, they hate me now. While iniquity... Is generational angst against one? Wrath is what the person plans to do themselves. 
they decide, I'm coming against you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to say this and that. You know, sometimes, hey, um, as you get older in years, there are some things you do. You're like, huh, man, I'm doing that I, like my parents did it. I didn't used to. I was like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to do that when I get older. And now you're doing it. Iniquity. All right? It, it's past. Now, wrath is you presently, the decision you make, how you act. And we've got to become more responsible for negative communication, a negative heart. We can disagree, but we don't have to be disagreeable. You know, we don't have to be ugly about it. Yet, when you don't operate in the fruit of the Spirit, then you don't operate in the fruit of the Spirit. So the way that you're going to communicate your anger is in an angry, distasteful way. Yet the Christian understands we can be passionate, but we also must be compassionate at the same time. Amen? Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will, Mother Mabry. God has kept you, and he will continue to keep you. Amen. And certainly good evening to Keisha uh, Diane Smith. God bless you right there. Amen. All right, so, hey, we're getting heavy now. Verse 4, let's hear him. Here he goes. My heart is sore pained within me, and the terrors of death are falling upon me. Here we go. Deep despair, y'all. But, you know, hold on. We're, you know, I would tell people, hold on, because we're not, you know, we haven't finished the chapter. One thing about David, and I love it. He's going to let us know the truth of how he was feeling, the pain. You know, he's not too proud to say, listen, I love God. God loves me, but this is not good what I am experiencing. But if you hold on, he's going he's gonna to bring you out. All right? He's going to show you how God's going to bring him out. All right. Sister Rochelle Sumner, God bless you. And I do my own thing. Soldier has joined in for a little bit. Good evening to you. Amen. All right, so my heart is sore pain within me. That's a deep sadness or a deep pain that you literally feel like your heart is broken. You know, I, I didn't even know how to describe it. I, I felt it. It's like, it's almost like your heart's got a crease in it and you feel it. Yeah, last year this time I was feeling like the whoa. You know, you feel like you can only breathe so far. You can't take a deep inhale. You know, you can't inhale deeply. Because it's like if you do, something's going to crack. You know, that's, that's the type of inner pain. So I want to say here, you know, just because we're in relationship with God does not mean that we will not experience inner pain. As a matter of fact, I, I truly believe that God communicates this in his word. So that when we find ourselves in that place, we can find ourselves in this place. Experience it, but get to the end of the chapter. Go through, but get through. Don't stay where you are. You know, you're experiencing this, but hey, if you know God, you'll understand trouble don't last always. Pain doesn't last always. What you thought you would not heal from, God has healed you from. Emotional scars, sorrow that you couldn't have imagined you would go through. Yet God is a healer. So while we're going through, we keep the hope of and the faith to know that what is to come is better than what I'm currently experiencing. It's the truth, you all. I'm telling you. All right. Um, Kimon Lawrence, hey, God bless you. Indeed. Good to have you on board. Amen. And be encouraged. Amen. And so, and it's saying the terrors of death. In other words, he's being tormented, terrified. In a place, nurse God is there, yet the current situation that is in, it's like animals coming over me, iniquity, wrath, feel like death is just right here. My heart, I, I don't even feel like I can breathe like I need to. That's a lot. That's a lot that experiencing. Amen. That, those of you that are sharing this, thank you so much. I know Deaconess Erlene Kimaria, and usually Superintendent and somebody else. I sister I turn somebody shares. Thank you. All right. Um, 
And here's, here's, here's what I like about this also. I don't like the experience, but I like the explanation. David is showing us that this is deeply personal. So your personal pain is because of your personal experience. Yet I want to tell you that you have a personal relationship, God, relationship with God. And God will bring you through personally. Isn't that beautiful? I'm telling you, don't give up on God. Hallelujah. And that's another thing that our children are missing. Because they were never in relationship with God. They never had that type of uh, relationship with God. God's people, God's house. Where do they go when the storms of life are raging? When the enemy is buffeting them? You know, so we, we've done them a disservice. And um, by golly gee, you know, those of you who are listening, you've got small children or grandchildren. It's not too late. Ah, I tell you, while it's still cold time, we got to make these moves. Amen? Amen. God bless you, Brother Ty Alex, and be strengthened. And our brother Philip Lambert, always adding to the conversation, he says, I think that for a lot of us, when we're dealing with insurmountable issues, we want to flee. We want to get out of there. And that's exactly how David speaks to the Lord in verses 6 through 8. He confesses wanting to leave it all and just run away. <laughs> Don't we love David? Isn't that why we love him? Amen. And Shekinah Worship Center, we spent almost two years preaching on his whole life. Just taking our time with it. And that's the reason. Because we knew that he, his experiences, we could understand. What? Oh, yeah. And, and Allison, that's the song. I go to the rock of my salvation. When, when it seems like your world has been rocked. Topsy-turvy. Topsy Just completely going. There is the rock, Christ Jesus. He's the one, the only one. And so you've got to be sure, very sure, that your anchor holds and it grips the solid rock. Amen? Yeah. I'm telling you, he is. Superintendent, you're right. David is one of the best lessons uh, of how to handle depression. Oh, yeah. We're reading it right now. Okay? And so he continues in verse 5. Fearfulness and trembling are come over me and horror hath overwhelmed me. Wow. Sounds like we're looking at a horror show, doesn't it? Sounds like a horror show. A nightmare. It's a nightmare that he is experiencing. Fearfulness and trembling. The giant slayer. The one that ripped apart almost a bear and a lion. But the enemy was after him. Listen. God has ever used you in your youth and you aim, aim to maintain your relationship with him oh but hell is going to come against you the enemy is going to come because he does not want you to live another day to tell your testimony he wants to drown you in the sorrows and the challenges of the day yet we read this because we know we know I haven't got there I haven't read it but I'm going to tell you it's going, to, it's going to come through at the end of it because God wouldn't leave you in it. He will show you that with every temptation, with every test, with every trial, he has made a way of escape. And this is what it's referring to. All right? Yeah, highest, height, highest heights and deepest depths. But God is omnipresent. That's right. Amen, Superintendent. You can be present wherever you are. God is still right there. So don't give up on God. I don't care how rough it gets. Oh, no. He, he's got a future for you. All right. He's overwhelmed. So six. Here we go. And I said, oh, oh. <laughs> now I see which Psalms I'm reading because I just recognized the scripture. He said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then I will fly away and be at rest. Look, look, look. Because we all do want to escape the... Escape that moment <laughs> when I'm experiencing um, grief, um, hardship, bit, um, angry people all day. I'm not like, oh, this is wonderful. Let's continue it. No, I wish I could fly, have wings like a bird, like a dove. I notice a dove, you know, a harmless dove. Ain't no fighting eagle. You don't want wings like an eagle here because right there you're going to kill the people. <laughs> so <laughs> he said, if I had wings as a dove, 
In other words, I'm not looking to mix it up with you. I'm not looking to fight and fuss with you. I want to have dove eyes. I want to have dove eyes. Eyes that are focused on God. Fully focused on God and not distracted. Amen? Yeah, that's what it's saying, Mother Gloria Tucker. God bless you. Yeah. And <laughs> wings of a dove. Then I will fly away and be at rest. I just want rest. At the end of it, I want rest. And we can live a life of rest. Mm-hmm. Dove eyes. That's right. Fully focused on God, Kamaria. Mm-hmm. Seven. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Selah. Like, think about that. Meditate. Selah. I remember doing a sermon. It might have been when I was an exhorter even in my former church. You know, David's got the band, wah, 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 the playing well, I don't know what instrument, they didn't have no guitars, whatever they got. <laughs> anyway, the playing. And every once in a while, there was a line in the song that brought such profound thoughtfulness that it was a sealer moment. The band would stop playing and they would meditate on that. No words, just, just, it's sort of like how we say a testament time, and I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all that he's done for me, my heart cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, God, for saving me. That's a sealer moment. Just everybody, shh. And let's have God to understand how we're communicating. Because, hmm? yeah, it's like, look, if I had wings of a dove, I will far, fly far away. I will go in the wilderness and be at rest. In other words, I want to be by myself. But no, I, I want to be by myself in a way that I'm not by myself with the enemy running after me. I just want to be at rest. You have no rest when the enemy is after you. And so this is what he's desiring. Okay? And then he says at 8, I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Lord of mercy. Now it sounds like it's on the water. Uncontrollable waters. The tempest. Master. Dun, 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 dun. The tempest is raging. You know that song, right? Mm -hmm. It was that um, James Cleveland back in the day. The billows. Anyway, this is how he feels, overwhelmed. The billows are coming, washing. The waves are washing over him. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a no-win situation. He's saying, I feel like I'm in a tempest, in a windy storm, a tempest, and I can't escape it. That's why he said, if I had wings of a dove, I will fly away. Peace be still. Oh, yeah. Peace be still. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Verse 9. Watch it now. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. We're starting to look at the turnaround now. Here comes a little bit of the fight. Destroy them, O God. Ah, what do I like about that? The confidence he has in God. Destroy them. Just like that. God, if it's your will, you will destroy them. You will stop them from destroying me. You will destroy them. Now, God, you may destroy them through distracting them. I don't know how you're going to do, but destroy them. Hmm? Divide their tongues. They can't even talk straight. A divided tongue. They can't, they're not in unity. A divided tongue. They can't communicate to each other and understand because they're getting this instruction from this person, this instruction from another person. And so it's a divided tongue. Come on now. That means that the signals are getting crossed, mixed up. And so what they will want to do to you, they cannot because they've got divided tongues. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Uh, Brother Ty Alex is saying, it's really sad that all this love I have for Christ Jesus, I can serve, I can share my mother in the flesh to love her as in the truth. It would have been awesome experience. So as much rejoice in the Lord, I rejoice. Amen. Here's the thing, that one day you're going to meet up with your mom and forever you'll be rejoicing together. That's why you stay on the straight and narrow. You know, that's a reason to stay on the straight and narrow. That after you see Jesus, you say, I want to see my mom. You know, and so that, that, that should uplift you so that you can live in victory 
and rejoice. Amen. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. All right. Verse 10 says, Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. So there's talking about the city. Because that was in the verse before. I've seen violence and strife in the city. Well, when you got evil and wicked people, that's what you're going to have in the city. They can only bring to the city who they are. People can only give who they are. So if they're full of strife, if they're full of anger, uh, all, all this sorrow, you know, and they want everybody else to feel that way, oh, boy, you know, chickens, if you're feeling down, you don't want to be dealing with somebody else and they're feeling down too. You need somebody to lift you up. Amen. And that's why we go to the word of God. Because if we keep on reading, which is why we need to read the word, you're going to get to the place of victory. I promise you. <laughs> if you keep on reading, victory ahead. Victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus. Victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord. I hear the conquer's tread. By faith I see the victory ahead. Yeah, that, and th that's the soldier. Soldier's going to have the war, going to have the fight. But we're going to stay focused and see the victory ahead. Amen. In the midst of it, you know, the day, day and night, the fighting and fussing and all that. Don't be a part of that. Stay apart from it and understand that God is going to deliver you through it. All right. Let's read 11. This probably will be my final verse. Sister Donna, God bless you. Amen. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. Mercy, I'm getting tired. That's two verses, three verses, talking about the city. That's unrest, y'all. That's protest. You know, don't think that what we see happening in America and, and around the world is like the first. No, we got some stuff happening here. I, I don't know if they're looting and they're burning, but this city, there's no rest. Come on, now, day and night, they go about it, upon the walls, climbing the walls, mischief, sorrow, violence, strife, deceit, guile, all that happening in the streets. Nothing new under the sun. But again, Anthony Jackson, God bless you. God bless you real good. And Nurse Avery, God bless you. So, you know, here's my theme. Um, <laughs> if we don't know God's word, we also think that what we see today is like, whoa, this is the first time, excuse me, that this world has ever been like this. No, 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 right here. Violence. Whenever you have a people, hear me, whenever you have a people whose heart is not towards God, you, you can have protesting that goes violent. See, I, I may not appreciate the issue uh, and, well, let me say it this way. I may agree with the protesters, but I may not agree with how they're protesting. You see? And Christians have to keep themselves clear of the evil and wicked ways. You can support the cause, but you can't get caught up in any of the looting and all that type of stuff. Because that's not a reflection of the kingdom. All right? Brother Shannon Hollis, God bless you and good night to you. Amen. I'm about winding down. Let me see. Am I going to do 12? Okay, I'm doing 12 and then that's it. <laughs> We're going to stop at 12 tonight, um, Deaconess in Training. Listen to it. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. Well, you can't hide when it's your family, right? I think that's the street is going down. Well, that's going to be hot tomorrow. It's going to be hot. Because it's saying, listen, if my enemies were clear enemies, but these people that are coming against me have magnified themselves, my own family, my son, he wants the throne. And so he's coming after me. It's some serious stuff. You know, I don't mind. It's like me. Um, and, and I think like you, I don't mind what, what I, if people say evil things against me, I, they don't know me. I don't worry about them. Now, my family starts saying something. Well, that might be a bit of an issue right there. You see, um, because they ought to know better because they ought to know you better. You see, um, yet David's family, his sons, 
they're coming after him. And this is a bit much for him. He said, hey, if it was my animals, I could have borne it. I could have handled that. You know, if it was the ones that hate me, that just come against me, I, I, I wouldn't have had no problem with that. And we're going to get, we're going to get into exactly what he's talking about tomorrow. All right. Remember tomorrow night, that's Vanity. That's our church teaching. We do it on Zoom. And so I usually start this teaching 20 minutes after eight tomorrow. All right. So between 20 minutes after eight and 830, that's the time that we start tomorrow night on Wednesday because we have our teaching. Well, I hope you've gotten something. <laughs> yeah, another story. Hope you've gotten something out of the teaching tonight. Um, thank you for being with us, with me, with us. And God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow. Um, until then, you know, shalom, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. You know what I'm saying, blessings abound. Certainly to Allison and Kimaria, blood kinfolk. God bless you to Shekinah Worship Center. God's blessings upon you to Bermuda and Burmese. Blessings abound. And to those overseas tuning in, I appreciate you. God bless you. So listen one more time. To Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah, you're worthy. And be blessed. We bow our head in honor and praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. You're welcome. You see where he needs to be praised today? Yeah, he is. You see where I need to be praised? Hallelujah.
Wonderful. Folks, have a restful evening. And you're so, you soy TNT. Thanks for popping in. Catch the post. I will post them on the various sites, all right? Everyone have a blessed evening. Blessings abound. Hallelujah, your word.